Today, I am going to break down my current weekly workout, everything that I do, why I've radically changed the way I used to work out, how I used to think about particular workouts. I'm going to share with you what it's done for my body, for my hormones, for my happiness, for my longevity. I'm also going to share with you what I do for cardio. In this episode, I'm going to break down exactly what my current strength training program is, my strength training splits, like how I work different parts of the body and on what days. I'm also going to share with you what I do on my rest days as well as how often I take rest days. I am going to share with you my workout routines and you can screenshot them. Feel free. I'm going to share with you my, my complete weekly workout plan as well as like what exercises I do on each day, how many reps I do, how many sets I do, all that good stuff. Today I also mention I'm going to talk to you about the cardio that I do. All right, let's do this. Anyways, enough about that. Let me break down for you what type of cardio workouts I do. Actually, before I do that, let me start with my current strength training routine or weight training routine, resistance training, whatever you want to call it. I design my workouts today very much the way I did when I designed Shalene Extreme for those of you who have done one of my at-home exercise programs. And listen, that is an incredible, even to this day, I, I stand so firmly behind that workout and that series of videos with the exception of the outfits I was wearing. I thought it was so freaking cool. I, I knew at some point it was a bad idea. Like those boots were going to come back to haunt me someday. I knew it. I didn't care. But listen, even though the outfits are very outdated, the mechanics and the principles in those workouts is very sound. And I designed that program based on a, um, I don't think you guys know that I'm a certified personal trainer. I don't know if it's still current, but I, at one point I had like 20 different certifications because uh, imposter syndrome. Anyways, I designed those programs using something that's called undulated periodization, a very, very fancy term that simply means you're phasing your workouts or changing your workouts over a couple, over a period of time. Typically for me, that's like every two months. You know, that, that's just what works for me. Some people, their periodization is every six weeks. Some people, it's every four weeks. Some people, it's once a quarter. I mean, what it basically boils down to is that you're changing the volume, the intensity, the exercises, the reps, the sets, and sometimes even the objectives. But like, so you're you're designing a new routine that's different from your last routine. And you, you're changing what, it, it looks more like a wave versus what's known as linear periodization. So with linear periodization, you're gradually increasing, always, gradually increasing your intensity and decreasing your volume over time. Um, In other words, like you're increasing how much weight you're lifting and you're decreasing your reps and you're slowly doing this. That's that's linear periodization. Undulating periodization just kind of goes like this, you know, kind of like life. (laughs) I guess another way to describe undulated periodization is it just means that for, let's say, eight weeks, I might be lifting very heavy and doing low reps. And then I I assess how that made me feel. And I also listen to my body. I'm like, what do I want to do next? And I have to change it up. So then for the next eight-week period, I might um, change the days that I have my rest on. I might go for higher reps and lower weight. Or I might just go eight weeks where I'm most days I'm doing upper and lower body at the same time and doing compound exercises. So that's how I plan, or I should say design my strength training workouts. I I love using undulated periodization. Again, don't you don't have to memorize how to say that. I I like changing it up. Changing it up is how we prevent the body from slipping into homeostasis to prevent the body from slipping into a plateau. Unless, of course, that's your objective, right? Because sometimes, like I met a girl yesterday who was like, it took me so long to get this kind of development, but it's perfect. Like I don't necessarily want my muscles to get any bigger, so I'm purposely plateauing. I love that. But it also helps you to optimize performance. You reduce the risk of overtraining, which is huge. I think it keeps things way more interesting because you can get bored. It's fun. And like every single time I change my routine, especially in that first week, I'm like, oh, God, this is great because I, I can feel the difference. OK, so I, I just want to repeat that this is what I do when I'm about to share with you. 
Um, it's consistent with my personal objectives. It's consistent with what makes me happy. I don't care if somebody else says do this. I don't care if people think like, oh, wait, that's too many days of legs. Like I, it, I'm not to be very honest, I am no longer designing programs for the masses. I'm just not. You're welcome to take what I've done and modify it to work for you. But I'm specifically focusing on things that make me happy and my own personal objectives. I I want to be agile. I want to be mobile. I want to feel so strong. I want to be able to pull things and lift things. I want to be able to squat down. I want to have my knees jet out over my toes. I want to work on mobility. I want to I want to look a certain way. Like there's an aesthetic to this too, 1000%. I freaking love the aesthetics of strength training. And I personally am trying to achieve larger shoulders. I want these deltoids to grow and grow and grow. And I also want my legs to grow, specifically my quadriceps. That's a new objective for me. My objective for the last year was to grow my glutes and mission accomplished. Like, obviously, there's still work to be done, but I just like the appearance of my legs and I appreciate my body for what it's doing for me. And I've got to honor it by taking care of it. I honor it by taking care of it means I'm listening to it. I'm not just going like, I have to work out today because it says I need to, like it's on my calendar. No, that's, that's an old way of thinking that I've moved on from. I do lift weights on a regular basis. And I want to say this to you, just lift, okay? Lift weights. You will look younger. You will look better. You will feel amazing. You've heard this over and over and over again, but you're probably not lifting heavy enough. But don't beat yourself up. Just just start lifting. If you just start lifting weights a couple of times a week, you're going to be better off than like 90% of the population. All right. So here's what I'm currently doing. Again, if you're listening to this episode, I better pull it up, pull up my notes. If you're listening to this episode on your podcast app, just the audio, I encourage you to pull up the YouTube video so you can take a screenshot of this. So my weekly five days, five days of strength training, this is new for me. This is a new periodization for me. Last periodization, I was working out six days a week or strength training six days a week. Today, I do one day of lower body, one day chest and triceps. These are what's known as the splits. And splits is just a fancy way of saying, this is how I split up my body parts. Okay, second uh, second day of chest and triceps. Third day is shoulders and hips, like abductors. Um, let's see, then back and biceps, followed by a full body workout. This is my plan. Take a screenshot of it. And I stick to it, you know, like 90% of the time, maybe 80% of the time. But again, I if I am super sore one day and the next day it says I'm supposed to be working some of those body parts or something similar... I take a rest day if I want, or I change things up. And this, again, is a workout plan right now that is very much geared towards my personal objectives. And because of that, my workouts typically are at the gym. And I'm going to explain this. This is not to discount any of anyone who works out at home. I'm, I'm going to share with you my personal opinions on it, again, as it relates to me. I couldn't get the gains that I wanted to get from the equipment that I had at my home once we moved to a house that didn't have a big home gym. Like I had a few dumbbells, I had uh, some bands, you know, BOSU ball. But in order to go as heavy as I want, as I was able to go, as I was progressing, I knew I needed to either like build another huge gym in our house, which just was not an option at the time. And it's certainly not an option right now because we're traveling. So in order for me to get the kind of results and the kind of body that I want, when we are traveling, I have to go to a gym. I need heavier equipment. So for example, if I'm doing squats, it's really hard even to get like 30 pounds like up onto my shoulders because I want weight bearing exercise. I want like something that compresses, this sounds bad, but something that puts pressure on my skeletal system so that I can improve my bone density. So let's just First of all, I don't have 30 pound weights at home. I didn't have 30 pound weights even when we were at the beach. The heaviest weights I had was 15, you know, because you only have so much room. So then that meant I'm, I wasn't going to progress any further than that. But I knew I was getting stronger and I knew I wanted to get stronger. So by going to the gym, not only it allows me to use equipment that makes it easier on my body to lift a lot heavier. So in this example that I'm, I'm going to share on the screen, you can see uh, in this example, I think I'm lifting, I think that's, let's see, 90 plus 90, 180. I don't know how much the machine weighs, but it's over 200 pounds that I'm basically 
squatting in this machine, there's no, I couldn't, I could, I don't have 100 pound weights. I couldn't even hold 100 pound weight in my hands. So that's one example. But there's just, there's so many examples of things where I just didn't have the kind of resistance that I personally needed to go to the next level with my strength training. I'm not in any way, shape, or form discouraging you from working out at home. In fact, I have an Instagram uh, subscription that I use. You know, and all I do, it's not customizable. I'm just going to be honest with you. It's it's just what I'm doing in the gym that week. And I set up my little camera and I just film my workout. And then people who subscribe to it on Instagram, I'll put a link to it. In fact, I'll pin it. I'll pin a link to my Instagram subscription at the top of the description for the show. Um, but I just I just film myself. And I always make a point of showing people, because I know a lot of the people who subscribe work out at home. So I always show you like how you could replicate it at home, like how to do it with free weights. But I'm just telling you, like, especially in the uh, periodization that I'm doing right now. So right now, the the program design that I'm following is based on six to eight reps and that I'm going to reach muscular fatigue, meaning like I can barely finish with good form by the eighth rep, right? So if I fin- if I do eight squats with 15 pound dumbbells, I'm I'm good. Like I, I I could keep squatting and squatting and squat. You know what I mean? It would take a lot longer for me to reach fatigue. So for me, especially with this particular periodization or program, I have to be doing it at the gym. Now, if you just took a screenshot of my workout plan for this month and you're like, I I I, I don't I don't want to go to the gym. I don't like the gym. I don't want to travel. I've got little kids, blah, blah, blah. Totally cool. Here's how you would modify it. You're gonna do more reps. If you have lighter weight. You can do the exact same routine. You're just going to have a plan that's designed around, again, more because you've got less volume, you're going to have, sorry, you've got less intensity, meaning you have lighter weights if you're working out at home, then you're going to increase your volume, meaning you're going to increase the number of reps that you do. It's easy. Just remember this. When in doubt, you want to get to a place where you reach fatigue, but not total failure, right? Because if your form starts to fail, the rep is kind of pointless, even though sometimes we use those words interchangeably, like when we're really boiling it down, what we're talking about is reaching a level of fatigue that you're like, okay, I'm not stopping just because I've hit number 12. And that was a tough habit for me to break. In fact, I had to use a personal trainer who really helped me break this habit. Shout out to my girl, Mia. Oh, you guys, Mia Finnegan. I'm going to pop her picture up on the screen. Look at this freaking body. And this woman is, let's just say in her mid fifties, unbelievable body. And she's been training for forever. And I, when I hired her, you know, was working with her that I realized, um, oh, I've been just stopping because my little note card says eight reps and I've been stopping at eight when I could really do 10 or 12, which means then I need to pick up heavier weights, right? Or do a few more reps. But don't just, don't let the number dictate when you're done. Let your form determine when your muscles have reached fatigue. Okay, so now let's go through the workouts that I do on each one of those days. So leg day consists of elevated heel squats. I'm doing squats with my heels elevated, kind of like I'm in high heels, and I'm allowing my knees to come slightly forward, but it's not, quote unquote, a sissy squat. If you've ever seen a sissy squat, And the reason why I don't do sissy squats um, is because they're just not as effective and they're really not functional because you never really squat like that. I mean, unless you're, I don't know, a waitress at the Playboy Club. I think that's how they used to have to like set people's drinks down. Um, So I do that is specifically to grow my quadriceps. I'm also going to tell you that I prefer to do leg extensions on a machine. But if you're doing this routine at home, you would do Um, squats with your feet just a little bit more narrow than shoulder width apart and you're allowing your knees to come forward and you're trying to keep your back a little bit more upright. Now remember when we let our chest come down slightly right and really stick our butt out and put the weight in our heels then that focuses on our glutes. So in this exercise we're just doing the opposite. We're putting the weight on the balls of our feet keeping our back a little bit more upright. And you, you can just feel it. Just think about muscle activation. Are you feeling it where you should be feeling it? And this is the one thing I always told my clients. Forget about what the last trainer told you was perfect form. 
just ask yourself, what muscle group am I trying to be targeting and do I feel it there? And if you don't feel it there, then adjust your own movement, adjust your own alignment. Like we're all built differently. Some people have a shorter femur and a longer tibia. Like all of these things are levers and it's it's uh, physics. So adjust accordingly. The next exercise that I do, walking lunges for the win. I swear, if I had to pick like one, I've said this before, but if I had to pick like one exercise that is the best for your overall lower body, because it's quads, it's glutes, it's hamstrings, it's everything, core, it's traveling lunges. But again, with this one, because I'm only doing six to eight reps, it, I count like each step would count as, uh, so in other words, six steps, right leg, six steps, left, left leg. So that's like, a, or eight. So it's like a total of, you know, 12 to 16. Sometimes I freak out when I have to do math on the fly like that because I'm like, oh my God, I hope I did it right. It's simple addition and it freaks me out. Okay, then I go into deadlifts. I love a good deadlift. Remember with your deadlifts that you want to keep the weight as close to your thighs as possible. Think about hinging at the hip, slight bend at the knee. Think about driving your booty backwards, okay? So I do deadlifts. Then I go from deadlifts to Bulgarian split lunges. Bulgarian split lunges, I'm going to describe that for you. It's like where one leg is forward and the back leg is up like on a chair or a roller or a bench or a, a step stool, anything that's elevated that allows you, I mean, it really forces you to put all of your weight on your uh, forward leg. And the forward leg, again, if you're really focusing on glutes, you want the weight to be in your heel. If you're focusing on quadriceps, you could put a little bit more weight on the ball of your foot. Um, for this one, I'm I'm definitely keeping it on my heel because I'm trying to combine glutes and quads. Um, there's a couple of different ways that you'll see in the video I'm showing where you can make this more advanced and elevate your front foot on a platform or a step and then have your back leg up on something you're balancing on. Holy cow. Talk about giving you a nice little peach bottom. I love the, that that Bulgarian split lunge. Can we still call it that? I hope that's not politically incorrect. Then we move on to hip thrust. Hip thrust, if you are at hip thrust, here's the other thing. In order to go heavy enough with hip thrust, it hurts. It hurts to put that kind of weight on your, uh, across your pelvis, shall we say. You know, like the skin is delicate there. And I, I mean, for the last 20 years, I've been saying that would somebody please invent something better than just putting a pad around a giant barbell? And finally, a lot of gyms now carry a hip thruster machine. Thank God. If you don't have a hip thruster machine, you can put weights on your hips or you can just use your body weight. But again, now if you're just using your body weight, what do you need to increase? Test question. That's right. You need to increase your reps. I'm gonna, Now you get that. So I'm not, I don't have to say that every single workout that I take you through. And then I finish with the sumo squat. You can do a sumo deadlift. I like the sumo squat. All right. That's that's really lower body. It's going to get your hips, your adductors, meaning inner thigh, outer thigh. I love it all. Let's move on to the next day, shall we? Chest and triceps. For this one, I start off with tricep dips, self-explanatory. Then I go into an incline chest fly. So it, it's like you know doing a chest fly with the free weights, but at, at an incline. So you can use a bench or you can create something like that at home. Then the tricep kickback. I freaking love the tricep kickback. I can feel good muscle activation with it. Some people say they can't. I here's my little tip, okay? And I've seen I haven't seen very many people do this, but if you think about physics, it just makes so much more sense if you get your elbow up as high as you can. You squeeze your elbow in tight to your body, get your elbow up high above your back, and you drop your head down, drop your shoulder down, right? So that elbow's up really high. Now we're creating so much tension, so much time under tension, and it because we're working against gravity, and that's the whole point of strength training. I digress. Okay. Then after that, we go into a simple bench press. If you are someone who's part of my um, Instagram subscription, all of these workouts, I don't just give you a printout. I also walk you through how to do them the right way, like cueing and form. Then I move into an overhead tricep extension and I finish with a chest fly. Again, if you are taking notes, great. Otherwise, Head on over and take a screenshot of those workout cards. I'm putting them up on the screen. My third day of strength training is for shoulders and hips. On this day, I start off with a sumo deadlift. Not easy to master, 
Uh, but it's amazing, amazing if you're looking for rounder glutes. Then I go into outer thigh abduction. This one, it really does help to use a band. This is one of those exercises that I've found I can do very effectively at home because the bands, the thigh bands, if you get one that's got, you know, usually they sell them on Amazon with in a pack of three. I'll link to um, some Amazon bands that are great, but they sell them usually in a three pack. They go from like, you know, light, medium, heavy. And I, I tell you, I, I can't even do the heavy one, but like a couple of reps, but these are super duper effective for outer thigh. From there, I go into a curtsy lunge. With a curtsy lunge, I really like to load this heavy at the gym, but again, you can do this at home. You just want to increase the number of reps that you're doing. Curtsy lunge, from there we go into a lateral raise. This is a high lateral raise. So it's different from just a simple like, you know, lateral raise where you're lifting your elbow up to parallel with your shoulder and your thumb is down like you're pouring a pitcher. This one's different. I want you to think of thumb up, okay? So imagine your arms at your side, your thumbs at your side, your palms at your side, and you're lifting your arms up almost like you're, I don't know how you would describe that, but like you're lifting your arms up like you're lifting up uh, your, why would you be lifting up your dress for the love of Pete? Okay. You're just going to have to look at the video or you're going to have to understand that it's just like a lateral raise, except that you're, you're kind of focusing on the medial deltoid, which is that larger middle head of the deltoid, which gives that shoulder that beautiful shape and definition. And you just get a really nice contraction there without risk of shoulder impingement, which is really common. That's why people have a lot of shoulder issues by opening up that joint a little bit and you're focusing on the medial deltoid. From there, we go into a, a, a work, a uh, exercise that's called the hip hugger or yeah, hip hugger. Is that what we call it? That's what I call it. Hip hugger row. So imagine you're holding on to very heavy weights, like very heavy in order for this to work. You hinge forward just slightly and then imagine you're pulling up like the heaviest pair of pants, like the heaviest pair of pants. Okay, so you're just like pulling straight up and you're trying to pull up like past your your waistband. Those are hip huggers. And then from there, I go into an overhead narrow press. So it's like a shoulder press, but I want your elbows in front of you. And that one really targets the anterior deltoid or the front of your shoulders. For my fifth day of strength training, by the way, that means that there are two days of rest that I'm doing each day. Where you place those rest days is up to you. For me personally, I listen to my body. I don't schedule them. I listen to my body. I wake up that day and I'm like, okay, let's see. First of all, do I need a, do I need a rest day? What did I do yesterday? How active was I? What muscles are sore? How do I feel? Where do I feel strong? Where do I feel weak? Those kinds of things. And I, I just, right now, I'm forcing myself to take at least two days of rest. In the past, I, like I said, I, so I'm super addicted to, to strength training. So I was doing like six days a week. And I think I'm going to see better results by really sticking to those two days of rest days. So here we are on our fifth day of strength training. And this for this day, it's a full body routine. So really fun to do this one. I start with something for my quadriceps. So you can do a, a squat here with just the weight on the balls of your feet. You could also do the leg extension machine. Personally, I'm doing the leg extension machine because it really helps me to target the outside of that quadricep muscle. And I do a, a pause at the top of the rep. So I'm sitting up nice and straight. I want that bar positioned appropriately for my lever length. And at the very top of the rep, I'm going to squeeze until my quadriceps are just on fire. I go from there into a sumo squat with a lateral raise. Okay, so I'm doing those two, two exercises together, a, a normal lateral raise and a sumo squat. That really gets a heart rate up. And for that reason, this particular day, this particular workout, you're going to be sweating your butt off and you're going to get your heart rate up and it could definitely count as your uh, low impact cardio day. All right. From there, we go into a traditional squat with an Arnold press, which is where you have the weights in front of you. And as you're lifting, you're rotating your palms forward and pushing the weights all the way up overhead. Then I go into a split lunge, kind of like that Bulgarian split lunge. But at the same time, I'm doing a tricep kickback. Ooh, that's good because now you're already in that forward leaning position because you're driving your hips back. So with this split lunge, instead of thinking down and up, I want you to think um, down and back and up and forward. Nice. Okay. From there, we'll go into a sumo squat with an overhead tricep extension. For that overhead tricep extension, I'm holding on to one, one heavy weight 
So if I can do with a single arm kickback, if I can do, let's say 15 pounds, then that means I should probably have a 30 pound dumbbell that I'm holding over my head for the tricep extensions. However, I, I have this one caveat for you. When it gets heavy, you're in a compromised position there. So I would prefer for this particular exercise that you're going a little bit lighter and doing more reps, even though I know it said on the screen when I showed you my thing, it said six to eight. Just to be safe, I would say err on the side of caution. And then the last exercise for this day is our curtsy lunge with bicep curls. So you're going to do, you're going to hold one weight on the same side that you're lunging and you're going to do a bicep curl with the other hand. This is a good one. And then you switch. I'm telling you, you're going to be so fatigued after this one. It really is a great cardio workout. Now let's talk about the cardio. For me, cardio is um, like, for example, on that last day of training, I might consider that my low cardio day. I am looking at my activity, which I track with an aura ring. Maybe you use an Apple Watch or um, whatever device you use. I think it's important because to track um, just so you get a level of activity. We are so accustomed to doing exactly what I'm doing right now, sitting down in front of a computer and just working and then like hitting the gym and thinking that we've been active. I, I really make it my goal now to have a minimum of 10,000 steps per day. And that's like just being active so that I don't have to worry about like, okay, do I have to do a 40 minute walk continuous? But there are days like today where I'm I'm sitting and I'm working on production. I'm working on videos, et cetera. I'm not very active. I'm inactive. In fact, I'm I'm very inactive today. My aura ring has already given me like two warnings I need to get up and move around. So on a day like today, I'm going to be intentional about my movement pattern. I'm going to go to the gym and I love walking on the treadmill. So I, I walk at an incline. I'll take it up between 10 and 12 incline. And then in terms of speed, that's that's up to you. But you want to take it into a place that's considered zone two cardio. Zone two cardio is everything. Zone two cardio, typically you're going to do zone two cardio for a longer period of time. It, it, it's, it does not create an inflammation. In fact, it's known to reduce inflammation. It, I never have any problems with my feet or my ankles or my legs or my muscles being sore. I just feel more energized. And you're burning tons of calories without compromising all of the other systems of your body because we know that high impact cardio, like HIIT training, which I do still on occasion, if you're doing too much of it, it will create a cortisol effect in your body because you're putting your body under stress that it wasn't designed to, to experience. That's why I was, I think, in a chronic, chronic state of inflammation when I was doing basically HIIT training like six days a week. So again, I'm on the treadmill. I take the incline up to uh, 10 or 12. I like to walk at a pace of between 3.0 to 3.5. So if I'm at a nine like or a 10 incline, then I take my speed up. Or if I go all the way up to a 12 incline, then I take my speed down a little bit. She has short little legs. They got to go fast. They got to turn over fast. Here's a little extra tip for you too. I love doing workouts like this in zone two. Zone two cardio is the way to go if you have things you need to do on your phone. So, and you don't want to sit and be active, like or inactive, I should say. I would much rather be sitting on a um, elliptical bike, what are they, not elliptical bike, uh, recumbent bike and checking my emails so that at least my legs are moving and I'm working in zone two cardio versus just sitting on my butt and doing nothing. I would rather be walking on the treadmill and watching a YouTube video or even reviewing the edits from my editor. So I can kind of like multitask, but it's, it's good multitasking. It's, it's, and, and for me, there was a time where I, I just was feeling so overwhelmed because I was like, okay, I got to get in my cardio and I got to do that. And I also have to work and I also have to like, so this is a great way to get it in. Just get it in. Now, I do not recommend you walking outside and also looking at emails on your phone. You're you're going to trip and that's just not. In fact, I don't know if it's safe for you to do it on, on the treadmill, but, you know, I'm a professional. So I do. So. You could always wear a helmet. I mean, just in case. Better safe than sorry. Knee pads. No one will say anything. You'll fit right in. You'll fit right in. At some gyms, you will fit right in. Our, this gym here in Miami, whoo, wow. Okay, walking has become my love. I used to run, and the only thing I liked about running is 
how it made me feel when I was done. I loved running because it was alone time and I felt like I could solve the world's problems. But after I started looking at the amount of calories I burn when I walk versus when I run, I'm like, it's so insignificant. And then oftentimes I couldn't run anymore because my legs hurt, my feet hurt. I had constant plantar fasciitis. So now I don't feel guilty at all that I I never run anymore. Never. I mean, very rarely. I love walking. Like walking now I can solve the world's problems. I can listen to a podcast, hint, hint. I can I can be alone. I can think through my problems and it's just a great joy. I never have shin splints. I never have plantar fasciitis. I feel great. It gets me outside. Again, I'm multitasking because I can get that 20 minutes of early morning sun. I tend to, you know, like to do walks in the morning sometimes, but you can do them like in the later afternoon too, just to get some vitamin D. And it's such a, just a wonderful way to get out in nature. It's also a great way to catch up with a friend. Like there, you know, you couldn't say to a friend like, hey, Let's go catch up and do a turbo kit class together. That that doesn't work. You can't you can't do those two things at the same time, but you can have a breathy conversation and, you know, get deep with a friend or with your significant other. I think this is a wonderful thing for you and your partner to do on a daily basis. I've got quite a few friends who make this a um a non-negotiable in their marriage. Like shout shout out to the Harders who they go for a walk together every single day. And I think they've been married for like 19, 18, 19 years. So it, it is a way to bring the two of you closer together, whether you know it's your significant other um, and, and also get, get your steps in to wrap up the cardio piece. So I tend to do cardio. My goal is to do something that gets me in the activity range of 12 to 15,000 steps every day. So that means most days I'm, I'm walking. That's my current uh, cardio. I'm walking or I'm doing something low impact I probably do some form of HIIT training, maybe two, three times a month max. For me, that's either jump roping because I'm trying to master it, or I'll do a low impact HIIT workout at usually at a gym where they've got some great equipment like using the BOSU, et cetera. My cardio, I, I make it a goal though to get my heart rate up at, you know, at least six days a week. And, and that's not for calorie burn. That's because of all the research that shows it is head for head pound for pound, as effective for many people at treating low-level anxiety. It's so effective if you look at the research on just about every form of all-cause mortality, including reducing your chances of Alzheimer's. It just makes me feel good. So why not do some some form of cardio? Every, our bodies were meant to move. So if you think of it as punishment, then that's what it'll be. If you think of it as how you're honoring your body how you're giving yourself a treat. How, I think of it as self-care and I freaking love it. And on the days when I don't get to get some form of light cardio in, I just, I feel like bum, bummed out. Like, gosh, I didn't take care of myself. I didn't do something for me today. The last thing I wanna share with you is when I work out. This is new. I used to exercise every day at 5.30 a.m. Why? because I had to do hours and hours of cardio. So if I didn't start at 5.30 a.m., I wasn't going to fit it in. Today, I know that if I have to miss a workout or sacrifice sleep, I'm going to miss a workout because I, I will not sacrifice sleep, at least if I can avoid it in any way, shape, or possible. To those of you who are moms and dads who've got little ones, oh, I know. There's really nothing you can do. You'll get through the season. But you know, they tell you to take naps. Is that even realistic? I don't know. I always remember hearing that advice and going, really? When, when, please tell me when I would be taking a nap. <laughs> so it's just, it's just a small period of time in your life. Enjoy it. Be grateful for it. Um, this is the time to pour into your kids. You've got the rest of your life to look like a hottie body. You know what I'm saying? But sleep is so, so important. The last time I did an episode like this, I shared with you that I, I still work out first thing in the morning and that, you know, my team knows that there's no interrupting me until like 11 o'clock. Well, recently, after I think probably five years, I've changed that. And so far, I love it. And I'm going to tell you why. So you know how you hear people say like, oh, work out first thing in the morning or oh, do, the, do this. You never know. Like you got, you don't be afraid to play with th these things because there's no right or wrong way to do something other than the way that actually works for you. And I found it just wasn't working for me. For I was working till too late at night 
and my workouts were inconsistent. It, it just felt like a mess eventually. And I think I started to notice this during COVID. But so then I was like, okay, it feels so weird to change a, a routine of working out first thing in the morning, which I have had for more than 20 years, but I did. Now here's what I do. Now I wake up and I get my glam on, which I've always done, right? Like that's, and listen, I like to go to the gym with a full face of makeup. That's for me. The gym can be empty. I don't care. I'm not trying to look good for anyone else. I'm trying to look good for me. So I like to wake up, put on my glam while listening to a podcast or an audiobook, And then I was going to the gym. Well, okay. But I was also finding that then I would have to come back home and like freshen back up again and get back in what what mode was I in before I left for the gym when I was listening to a podcast or listening to an audiobook and I was like I was kind of in work mode or I was in creative thought mode right and then I was going to the gym and, and so it just felt eventually I realized it was disjointed and I thought well what if instead I got the glam on got ready for the day which I like it's it's like it's therapy for, it's meditative it's therapy for me I freaking love it and then I just started creating content and actually working and responding to emails and talking to my staff and just doing all the things that go with being an entrepreneur. And instead, I went to the gym mid-afternoon, like we're talking one or two o'clock. And I can't even tell you like this, everything has changed. I love it. 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 Was that Molly Shannon who did that? Anyways, I do. I love it. And I'll tell you why. Because she is an introvert and I film my workouts for my Instagram subscriptions. And I always feel a little weird when I pull up my camera and people are probably like, oh, she thinks she's an influencer. You know what I mean? And plus, people don't want to be in your shot. I don't want to be in someone else's shot when they're filming. So I, I like that solves that problem because there's nobody at the gym at two o'clock in the afternoon. Very few people. Also, I, I have more energy when the gym is empty. I feel like I own it. And I just want to like, I want to murder my workout. I freaking love it. And when you go first thing in the morning, everybody else is there first thing in the morning. When you go after 5 p.m., everybody in the world is there at 5 p.m. Okay, I digress. Do you have this happening at your gym? And I think it's adorable, but it's like a thing. A lot of the gyms, if you go there after five o'clock and it's like near a high school, boys and girls are now working out. It's really cute. And the girls, like these high school girls, like when it's a high school, it's always two high school girls. One of them kind of knows what she's doing. The other one doesn't. And they always wear like, you know, their gym shark shorts and like a matching set. The guys always work out in groups of three to five. And they have fluffy hair in the front. These are the high school boys. There's one of them who his dad probably is like a personal trainer or something. So he, he knows what he's doing. And he's in charge of the rest of them. And like one boy will be doing chest press while the other four are like standing around and laughing and drinking their Mazda drinks. And it's, it's like a testosterone fest. But they're really just there to look at the two girls in their Gymshark shorts. But actually, they're not. Like, I will say this. I've noticed that these, at least at the gyms in California, I haven't seen it here because where I'm staying, there's like no, like high schoolers don't work out this gym. But what's going on with my bun? But I have noticed in California, like, I don't know if these are just these kids, but like, it seems like they're more into health and fitness. And I pray that that's true. I hope that people learn, especially young women today. It seems to me because of the influence of Instagram, they get strength training more than cardio. I think that's like something we Gen Xers are having to break the mold, break that habit. But I'm telling you, just changing the time that I work out has made such a huge difference. So when I'm often asked, like, what's the best time of the day to work out? The best time of the day to work out is the time that works the best for you. If you enjoyed this episode, I want to encourage you to listen to quite a few of the other episodes I've done, like, uh, you know, the 10 biggest mistakes that women make when they're trying to transform their body. I think that's a really important one. The one I just recently did with Mind Pump Sale. That's another great one, especially if you're, you know, trying to understand the benefits of strength training. I'll link to both of those in our description as well. So I want to encourage you, if you haven't, you could check out my Instagram subscription. It's I think it's five bucks a month. And there you'll you'll see demonstrations of each of the exercises that I've listed here. I show you how to do them, how to do them at home, how to do them at the gym. 
But most importantly, I want you to know that you're perfect and you're beautiful. And you know this is this is a journey, and, and it's fun to want to get better and get stronger. Nothing makes you feel more confident than strength. Well, I mean, a few other things do too. But physically, when you're strong, like you just feel like a an invincible woman, and that's or man, depending on who you are. Like you just strength does something for you, and I can't underestimate or recommend it enough. So get some weights and don't be afraid to lift heavy. You're not going to grow huge bulky muscles. It doesn't work that way. The body does not work that way. If you haven't already, please be sure to double check and make sure that you've subscribed to the channel. That way you'll know the next time I post up a new episode, be sure to hit the notification. That way you'll see it. And please don't forget to check out the first pinned comment if you're looking for any of you know, like how to do those exercises that I shared today in this episode. Thank you so much for being here on YouTube. Share this video with someone if you think it would be helpful for them. I appreciate you. No, I love you. I mean it. And I'll talk to you soon.